Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I am Megan Rust, educator for interpretation here at the Frist Art Museum. Welcome to this afternoon's conversation with Osgemios. This program is presented in conjunction with the exhibition Osgemios in Between, now on view in our Gordon Contemporary Artist Project Gallery until January 12, 2020. Osgemios is the professional name for Gustavo and Octa Octavio Pandolfo, artists and identical twin brothers who are internationally celebrated for their vivid and playful public murals and studio work. They create imagery that blends wide ranging influences from Brazilian folklore to hip hop culture. Today, Gustavo and Octavio are joined in conversation with the Frist Art Museum's chief curator, Mark Scala. The Frist would like to acknowledge this land we are standing on today. The Frist Art Museum acknowledges and pays respect to the Cherokee and Shawnee native peoples and elders who call this land their homeland. We also acknowledge and offer great, deep gratitude to the ancestral land and water that supports us. The Frist also thanks our sponsors. Osgemios In Between is supported by the Friends of Contemporary Art, and as always, we are grateful for the continuing operating support from the Na Metro Nashville Arts Commission, the Tennessee Arts Commission, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Now, please join me in welcoming Gustavo Pandolfo, Octavio Pandolfo, and Mark Scala. Thanks to everybody for being here. It's really a pleasure. How many of you have had the chance to see uh, in uh, Os Gemios in between. Raise your hand. Okay, so now you know why we selected them. It's, it's, it's painfully obvious why we selected them. Uh, we were just thrilled to be able to uh, bring uh, such eminent artists here to Nashville. The work is incredible, as you shall see. Um, works really beautifully, I think, with Hearts of Our People, Native Women Artists. There's a really wonderful conversation between the two exhibitions, and we love it when that happens. Uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, thank several people who are uh, in the audience. We have several lenders here. Uh, we have Joshua Bratman, Brian and Vanessa Belatich. Belatich? Um, I think James and Irene Karp may have arrived. Um, Jasmine Levitt is, works with the guys. Um, and uh, Jennifer Mora with Lehman Maupin Gallery. So uh, it's really wonderful to have uh, everybody here, and I'm sorry if I missed anybody, but uh, it's, it, I, I think you'll find that um, that Otavio and Pandolfo, uh, Otavio Pandolfo and Gustavo Pandolfo, uh, uh, Gu, Gu and Ot Otovo, Otovo, um, that's what we, you know, we who are our best buddies call each other. Um, <laughs> so, and, and you can try that too. Um, oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> But I think they have a way of appealing to people. And you'll see, I mean, I think that it, it's quite obvious the emphasis on ex access, you know, the, the idea that uh, art is for everybody. Art is as much about pleasure and as much about invention and the imagination as anything else possibly can be. And you really become a participant in the works when you see them. And so I think that, that they, they, these guys do seem to, um, to attract people. I don't, know. I don't know what that's all about. Um, but anyway, so what we'll, uh, I, the, uh, we'll start by talking about the, the title of the exhibition, In Between. You can see right now in, in the photograph on the screen, they're actually standing in between two things. But that's not really why we called the exhibition In Between. Maybe you guys can talk about just why did we call the show In Between? Oi, oi, okay. Uh, I think the name just come later, after we have the whole concept of the show, the idea of the show. First of all, I wanted to thank everybody that come today. Uh, we are very happy to be here in the, and to share our dreams with you guys. And thank you. So in between, it's more about a, we try to, uh, I don't know, it uh, was more about the connections and about the space. We w when we're thinking about the name in between, it was more about space, the space in between. For example, to come from here to there, this empty space. So for us to create something that is like a travel, 
So to arrive in that picture, for example, is a space in between. So this space, i space in between for us is very important because it's the whole process of uh, arriving in something. And for us, if it this way, if you find our the right way and the good way, uh, is this is the most important for us because we know that the result is going to be something positive and something good to share with everybody. It's more about this. Thank you. Yeah, so as you've been in the gallery, you might have seen that the larger gallery contains work that sort of relates to uh, maybe uh, th there's a sense of tropicalia about it. You know, bright colors and rainbows and characters that might seem to be drawn from, uh, uh, from somebody you might have seen and then invented or, or, or made up something about that character. And then in the central gallery, in between, there is that, that uh, wonderful uh, turning sculpture. And then in the left-hand gallery are works that relate to urban culture. And we'll talk about all of these as we go through. So that, in some ways, that was part of the idea for In Between. But it's so about so much more. I mean, I think this, I, what you're talking about is like a passage. You know, the, the, the movement, the process, the realization of something. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much like this. Because for us, the process is very important. And how we, because we change a lot of things in the, in, 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 in the, in, in the way. Uh, our creative, creative process of doing something that's very unique, it's very particular from us, and we improvise a lot. And we like that, we love that improvisement. So, and for us, there is no space in between me and him. So, we are one artist, one world, one voice. So. It's a funny name because there is no space in between us, but to create something, to put this out, and to make this concrete for people to see, there is a long way sometimes. Well, let's talk about um, that idea of process, I think, and the improvisation. From some of the things that you said, it, it in some ways relates to the culture that you grew up in, in Sao Paulo. Yeah. Um, and so maybe what you can speak to next is uh, how you got to where you are. I mean, you started, uh, uh, apparently you started before you were even born. Is yeah. that correct? Yeah, yeah. we believe and, that. And then, uh, and then maybe talk about your childhood okay. and, and some of the, the uh, things that, that inspired you to the, the path that you took. So and we are from Sao Paulo, Brazil. Big oh city. Oh my God. Wow. And we, they, they had these. These are great photographs. Yeah. This, I think, is 1987, and that one's 1988. So we grew up in Sao Paulo. It's a big city. We was very lucky to, to our childhood was in the neighborhood they call Cambusi, very close to downtown. And this neighborhood, in 84, started a big... Uh, like a b-boys band, you know, like people used to hang out in our neighborhood to break dancing, to do graffiti, to, which was the first time we have a contact with, with hip-hop, was in front of the house of our parents, just in front, like across the street. So we was like, I don't know, 84, we was like 10 years old, I don't remember. But we used to go out in the street to play, like, like kids, like childhood. And every day we saw the guys dancing in front of the house of our parents. And this, uh, we drawing since like three years old. We never stopped to drawing, like every day. So it's one of the ways we find to communicate with our family and communicate with me and him together. We talk, drawing, in the same paper. Uh, my father and my mother, she, they always look us, they will like to drawing, they give us paper for us. And say, no, 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 just one. We're going to draw in the same paper. And then we make the same drawing together. So they understand that our creative side was very strong. And when we was in the streets, to play in the street with friends, and we used to build in our own toys. Because my family, there is no money to buy like new toys. Or we, we, and we also we like to create our own cars to push in, you know, to go to the old, old factories, take trash in building stuffs and burning like like normal childhood in the neighborhood that we have to find 
ways to play. You know, we saw these guys breakdance in front of the house of our parents like every night. They hang out there every night. In it's, it's like the neighborhood that everybody know each other. You know, like that is half Spanish, half Italian, and everybody knows the family of each other. And then when we look there, say, "Now nah, we want to do that." I don't know what's there, but I want to do that. They are a little older than us. He was like 10, 11 years old. Say, "No, I want to do that." You know. And then we start to dance in Michael Jackson. <laughs> and then the guys come say, hey, you Com should stop to dance at this. Completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. This is not nice. You should guys do this. No? It's much fun. And then when we start, 85, 86, we even have idea what is hip hop back then. Uh, we know that in the movie, in the same time, there is a beat street show in the movie. We didn't see the movie in the scene. But every day we come to the guy and say, please, can you explain me the movie? Can you explain it? It was like very annoying. Because we want to know everything. How we do that? How we do that? And like crazy. And then we really start to like get involved with the hip hop culture uh, and start to dancing. I want to do like the old guys, you know, like to be like cool like the other guys. And they start to teach us how to do. But the old guys also wanted you to like draw for them. Yeah, because, and, and then they know that we like to draw every day. And they want to have like a graffiti jacket, everything. They come to our parents' house, ring the bell, say, the guy's there. Can you make the drawing like right? Fantastic break or whatever. And now we sit in drawing, give to them. They paint the jacket. So we start a relation and with them. And our parents don't understand nothing. Why they ring the bell and ask us to draw <laughs> for them? Yeah. Say, they need to make a class work. Uh, after the class work, they can draw. And then. We was like doing fast because we want to draw for them. And I think it was very similar than everybody starts in this time. You know? uh, we go to the school, we don't want to sit and pay attention in the school. We want to draw. We want to do graffiti you know, because we want to, uh, after we get after the school. All your kids out there, take note. <laughs> yeah. But Brazil was, di the, di the difference is Brazil was difficult because uh, everything come later for us, the informations was delayed and like uh, we grew up in a neighborhood that he, uh, like he say was uh, you you dealing with uh, b-boys breakdancing but in the same time guys from the crime together you know they hang out sometimes they pass them by they see they leave so they, they was there as well so uh, we, we have a lot of friends that choose the wrong way but we choose to hang out with them so thanks God that we, we choose the right way. And, and so information's uh, come very late for us. And we have to really find a way to get information of what's happened in, in New York or in California. Because even like in shoes, we don't have like the, the brands like Nike, Pumas, all this. We used to do our own shoes. Like, you know, go to the bus, don't do this, but we cut the, the seats of the bus like this <laughs> and make the sign of the shoes and glue to have a puma. Very ridiculous. So we have a little treat. We have a little treat for you. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to see a little film clip, a family film clip? Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this at home. So which one of you is that? It is him. <laughs> oh, they were pretty good. They were pretty amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you should have seen him break dancing last night during the reception. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was incredible. We uh, no broken bones. No, we get we get like very addicted of hip hop back then. You know, we try to we try to do everything. We try to do graffiti. We try to do DJ rap and break dance, of course. It's the time that it, when you go to the B-Boys bench, everybody tried to do a little bit of everything. You know. But the, the good thing was this missing uh, information make us create something that was different from the whole world. Like mixing with Brazilian culture, mixing with uh, uh, the, the Brazilian dancing and the way of uh, painting, like using painting for cars or for walls, roller, and then outlining with spray. We don't have money to buy 
five cans or 10 cans of spray can, you just get one. So this one was very precious. So you have to fill in everything with latex and then do outline with spray can, the last thing. But so um, it was very difficult, but this was good for us because we created something uh, that was very South American style, or very unique from the other side of the world. Which it's time for a commercial break now. Um, it, uh, we just wanted to make sure that everybody knew coming to Oz Art, speaking of Brazilian dance, uh, is the wonderful, I probably will say it wrong, a pista, uh, a dance troupe, and I think they have a lot of hip hop influence. So uh, this will be an opportunity for you for the fall in Nashville to be a real uh, celebration of Brazil. Um, and so let's talk a little bit more about how do you transition from being like street artists, you know, you, some of your work is more graffiti, some of it murals, and then at some point the door is open or a window is open to you, the idea that there's, there's a wider world out there and, and I'm especially interested in the, the encounter that you had and the relationship that you developed with Barry McGee, <coughs> who's an artist, a, a very well-known street uh, uh, artist uh, based in San Francisco. I think so, come uh, early uh, before we met him. We met the uh, first guy we met was Espeto, he's a Brazilian artist, and he was one of the first guy that we saw, that we met with a very unique style of drawing. And then back then we was drawing Everything we see in the, the books, like spray can art or subway art. Or yeah, like he says, very, oh, it was very difficult to have it, like books like this. Yeah. But we find out there is a guy in our neighborhood that he's find the subway art. I don't know how, he's still somewhere and he show up with the book. And I say, wow, subway art, that's crazy. Uh, can, you, can you have for, he said, no, 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 it's mine. You know? I said, can you make a photocop of that? And he did a photocop. That's crazy. So we spent like, days, write down all the colors of the pieces to know, okay, this piece by seeing this color, this color, this don't the pieces, blah, 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 just to imagine how it was colorful. So, yeah, from that, we have uh, this information that was very precious for us. And we drive our mother crazy because she was English, English teacher back then. And we told her to translate the book like hundreds of times like really hundreds of times. And then at the same time, my father, I don't know how, he find beat strip in VHS. And now we go crazy. That was the big mistake like, he, he did in our life. Imagine come to the, our neighborhood, like 30 guys dancing and say, hey guys, come to the house, we have a cine. We're gonna watch beat street in my house. So imagine my mother and my father say, okay, it's, it's a small house, 30 guys watch beat street like the whole day. And she cook. <laughs> She and cooked, she cooked for, for the guy, she hanged. it was really fun. Was very nice. you know? So we start to be a big family. And also when we, my father realized that, okay, we cannot change these guys, you know? They are like this. They, cannot, they like to do what they like to do. Drawings, graffiti, breakdance. We like to hang out in the, in the B-Boys bench. And we wanna go there. It was in the subway station, they called São Bento. But to go there, was not close to our neighborhood. So my father used to hang out with us in the B-Boys bench to take us there when we was like 10, 11 years old. And he started to know everybody. He became a friend of all the B-Boys there. <laughs> we started a very good relation with them until he, he feel comfortable to say, okay, you guys in the good hands, go hang out with them, you know? And now we start to really hang out with the B-Boys, everything. And then like back here, in 1994, uh, we was in Sao Paulo, and then somebody called my mother's house, and my mother picked up the phone, was an um, American guy speak. He said, I don't know who's calling, but this is a guy from America, he speak English, luck that I speak English, and he wanna meet you guys. Uh, he's a graffiti writer from San Francisco, and say, yeah, wow, yeah, tell him to come. Because until there, we never have a, a contact with somebody from outside. It was the first time. But we never have idea who is him, nothing, you know. And then he show up in the house of my mother at that time. Uh, was there, changed everything. Because he showed us a different side 
of the graffiti wall. That we, until that, we did a lot of walls in the Sao Paulo in that time, in 90, we started in 91, doing murals like crazy, like a lot of painting. And he saw one of the walls and he contacted us. And then when he, when he come to the house, I remember like he bring a small box like this with a VHS of Star Wars, <laughs> Fat Caps, New York Fat Cap, stickers, markers. And a graffiti magazine. And graffiti magazine. So this is for you guys. Yeah, and then from there we get inspired a lot. Yeah, I think it's a wonderful story because what it, you know, it does uh, talk to the way artists help each other. Artists are really interested in in their work, but also work of younger people. And I, I think yeah. it's something that will come around to later on yeah, because, because you all example, have the same, some of the same ideas. When, when we met Speto, this, this Brazilian guy, in 1988, he was in the B-Boys bench and somebody come for in, in the B-Boys bench and say, hey guys, there is somebody that we don't know painting our neighborhood. You should guys go check. And they'll say, yeah, let's go fight. You know, we go, <laughs> who's the guy that painting our neighborhood? We, we, we have our crew, we, we go there. Them. When we saw Speto say, uh oh, it's something serious. Because this guy is from different part of the city and he come to paint it there and he have very good style. And now we straight away become best friends. He says, no, 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 we don't fight because he's good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he wasn't good, it would have been a different yeah, yeah. story. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, about process. And I, uh, I think we have a, a drawing class here from Murray State, is that right? Uh, Kentucky. Uh, welcome, and let's talk about drawing. Th just, just go back a little bit of Barry, okay. just to to, sh to make this connection. When we saw his painter that he had his own style, we realized that okay, we have to stop to copy the American graffiti where we saw in the Mac subway art, and we start to we have to find our own style, our own way to drawing. Why we are here? Why are you drawing like since three years old? You know, we have to discover that. And then when we met Barry, it's the same. He showed us that he, he, he lived with his art, that for us it was really far away to live in Brazil with art, because we have to work in a bank, in like repair cars. We did a lot of things to help our family. But when we saw Barry, after he showed us like this bombing graffiti world, uh, we said, okay, now is the time for us to close ourselves to understand why we are here. Why, what, uh, what is our mission here? And he helped us a lot because he showed us that, okay, I, I have my own style with two colors. I, I can translate what I imagine. Uh, I leave you with art. Yeah, I come from San Francisco to here, like in Sao Paulo. For us, it was like a lot of information, you know? Even see all this that he bring. I remember he showed us Star Wars for the first time in 1994. Imagine how long. Very late. Yeah, make us like, we saw the movie, we take the cans, go to the yard and paint the first train in Sao Paulo, like this. Let's go to, the, where is the yard? There, okay, let's go. Like this, you know. I don't care. We have to do a train, you know. Something like, we feel like a lot of energy. And he teaches us how to tag, uh, tropes, all these things, is by Barry. Barry but for us, was the most important thing with Barry was the relationship, things that we learned with him, uh, with him and Margaret, and then, and he showed us that everything is possible once you believe. And because for us in Brazil was really far away to imagine to travel around the world with your art everywhere. But the key for us was find your style. Find your own way. No, no matter how and no matter what you were gonna do with this. But the most <coughs> important thing for us back then was okay, we have to find our own style, we have to have our own identification of drawings and stuff. That was the most important for us back then. Yeah, we never expect to travel, to do exhibitions, to do shows, nothing. We just wanna have our own style to drawing. Just that. Yeah, back then. It's the most important thing that we have back then. Okay, so now let's look at these drawings. So Which I think are wonderful. Uh, were, were you three years old when you made these? No. no oh. I, <laughs> I didn't think so. This is when we already find. Mm -hmm. But since we arrived there, we work a lot, like really drawing a lot. 
but yeah, it gets fired for a lot of people, different people. Like, yeah. Well, I, I yeah. just think it's so amazing that when you were kids, when you were very little kids, you were communicated to each other just through drawing. And yeah. there were drawings, not just on paper, but on, on the kitchen table and on the mattresses. And Everywhere. We destroyed yeah. the whole house um, of our friends. But especially, you know, for, for the benefit of this drawing class, when you say everything is possible, you are going to see some of the most amazing works of art, some of the most comprehensive uh, uh, combinations of different mediums and different ideas as we go through. But it all starts with drawing. Which yeah, is all really starts amazing. with the drawing. I think we start this because also because Arnaldo, our old brother, he, he drawing too. And he saw, since we, like, we are three years old, he, he catch, say, okay, they have the thing, you know, they have the feeling. And they always support us somehow. Because he liked his arts too. And he saw that we always sit and drawing the same paper, and he support my mother, my father, my sister. Everybody say, okay, let them alone because they know what they do. You know? They are their own world. They create their own world. Well, let's. I, I think the jurors remember now. I think one of the moments they really understand was in when we we was in the school, like I don't know, uh, eight years old, nine years old. <coughs> we always drawing, and the teachers called my mother, say, you, should, you have to come here, because these guys don't do nothing, just drawing. <laughs> so let's try to separate them to in different classes. One here, one another class. Okay, and then <laughs> they have like a, uh, like a competition of a drawing of drawings in the school, like Queen, they're gonna travel to Brasilia, something like this in the school. And now the, the, there is a team, like a folk party in Brazil. Everybody has to draw in this kind of party, like carnival, okay? All the class. And now we did the same drawing, cl different class. <laughs> and then they go crazy, say, come on, call his mother again because something wrong here. Put them together. <laughs> they don't have iPhone, they do nothing, you know? Like seven years old, they did the same drawing, two different class. And then they put us back because say, okay, it's there's nothing we can do with that, you know. They probably didn't know that you also shared the same dreams sometimes. No, right? no, no. Yeah. That's an amazing but thing. But drawing for us was really, uh, it's always special, very, always important. It's like a diary. You write down everything, all the ideas, and, and this is always developing in different, in different ways, new and new. But to arrive in, in, some, in something like that's special for you, you need a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, we spend a lot of energy in this. Still, still. Like yeah. But there is a period in our life that we like close ourselves for like four years. I think 95 to 97, 98. Drawing every day, like every day, every night, like <coughs> drawing, 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 until we find. Because yeah. we, uh, when we leave the, we was working in a bank bank? Yeah, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> was terrible. And then we was living with par our parents and we just decided to quit after seeing Barry, you know, so now we have to quit, we have to stop this, we have to do only art. And we just quit. One, one day, the other one's another day. We're quit. combining, let's do it like this week, yes, but don't tell our parents, but yeah. Just show up in we the house. One day, yeah. You do it the next day. Yeah. And then we did. And then we come back home. My mother, what are you do guys doing here? Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the, the drawings, uh, just that. And she was like, in the first moment, she was kind of panicked. She said, oh, but how we do? You know? I said, no, no, don't worry. Everything's going to be fine. And she said, yeah, I, I, I know you guys. Everything's going to be fine. Well, you sound like you have an amazing family. Yeah, we do. really very supportive. She's an artist too. She's doing yeah. body body. Yeah. But since then we drawing and we try to learn all the techniques of painting, like oil painting, pastel, acrylic, air, air, uh, everything. Like we, we say, we have to know everything because we need to make a portfolio mm -hmm. and goes in the, in the stores to ask for painting. We need to go to the newspapers to do design. Uh, um, uh, quadrinho. Comics. Comics. We need to go to the publicity places to whatever we can find to make money with the art. 
we have to find because now we work with drawing. And that was crazy because it was very difficult. And the same time we paint the house of our parents, we paint our bedroom, we paint the, like the, the backyard, we paint the whole thing. And then we have no more space, we start to go by the, the roof of the other house and paint the other house. And then we start to go in the street and start to use the street like a support to paint in the streets in Sao Paulo. This is how we discovered Sao Paulo, actually. Was doing this, was doing graffiti. This is how we discovered the city, the system, how they work, how they, they interrupt yeah. you, how they like what you are doing, how and they enjoy. We, we there we start different because we understand that, okay, the graffiti scene all over the world, they do at night time, but we do, we're gonna do different. So we met, when we met Speto, Binho, Tinho, Richard, we say, okay, let's try to do in the daytime, not in the nighttime, just to see what's happened. Because we figure out there is no law against. So we say, they don't have laws to put us in jail, but they don't like what we are doing. But we, let's try, why not? And then we try, try to do every Sunday. Because Sunday it's more quiet, every Sunday we go out to paint. And then we teach them, you know, the that this is something good for the city. And well, let's, uh, let's change gears and talk about a few of the works of art in the show. All right. I think that um, you love to celebrate mystery. I know this. Mm -hmm. And so much of your work is, um, is sheer invention. But maybe you could talk about, about certain things, certain motifs that reappear, like you have rainbows or prisms, you have ocean fish and uh, windows and UFOs and so what are some of the ideas that you have that go into constructing this fantastic world? This is just like a fishman. They go to fish and they grab a lot of good fish for, for him. But the best fish is, is the, the wife <laughs> he gets. So he has caught the mermaid? Yes. Yes, okay. Or she caught him. She caught him. Yeah, yeah, they they caught each other. Yeah, um, and they have a love story. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that the uh, we've talked about the fact that each of these paintings, it's not uh, like a film. Still, it's almost like a, a whole movie. Yeah, it is. For us, it's like a movie. It's like just like a, a freeze. Yeah. You stop a pause of the movie, but for us, it's like everything is like a movement. Like there is smell, there is uh, changing of the light, and I think because we get too inside of our, in, inside of our world, that sometimes just one painting is, is, is not enough to express how many things we have in mind to, that we would like to say, like to show. You know. That's why uh, we like to do like installations, uh, sculptures, paintings, murals, painting the streets, everything, because we find in all these different tools to, to, to express, okay, this guy have connection with the next painting, this next painting have connection with this mural we did there, everything is connect. It's like different ways to represent our world that, that we believe. Because this world that we're painting, for us, is like 100% real. It exists, we live inside of them. In, like painting like this is like take a photo of this situation and show. Okay, this is what's happened that moment in this place. For us, this is like 100% real. Yeah, yeah. Well, the idea of, uh, here's another one, uh, the, uh, the abducted angel um, that's in the I show. I love this name. You can see exactly what they're talking about. You know, I, I've only seen the work of Oshimias when there's a lot of it together. You know, and, it, and it's, it's so gratifying, it's so beautiful. And not just the paintings in, in a gallery, but when I saw the work at, um, at Lehman Maupin, uh, there were doors and windows between, you know, uh, between the paintings, um, the idea of a passageway, or, you know, uh, the, the, the window motif was really important to you. Yeah. Um, here you have, e even in the abducted angel, the top part is a door. The green part is a door, right? Yeah, it's a door. The doors in the windows was more like, a, in your life you close a lot of doors and you open a lot of doors. Yeah. So sometimes you open the, the right one or sometimes you, you open the wrong one or close the right one, and, you know. Or you don't open because you're afraid to open, but you don't, have, you, know, you don't need to have a door. You don't need to have a window. So yeah. sometimes you jump inside of one window and then it's excited, it's very excited and yeah. you don't want to come back. Yeah. 
Yeah, so this idea of liberation or escape or And a passage. good way, uh, jumping a window is a good way, no? Yeah. It's like dream. Well, uh, you did say to me, I, I don't know if you guys can see the little, the little dude with a striped shirt, and he's holding a, a, a bluebird that's playing the record. Uh, you see him with the pointy hair? Um, the, there in the, the painting itself, you can barely make it out. There's kind of a beam of light coming down, a beam of Yeah. Light. Yeah, yeah, and that's sequence, four, right? Yeah. Four engine. Right, and so, and then above in the doorway, you see a UFO. So, and uh, we talked about abduction, and w w I don't remember which of you said, but doesn't everybody want to be abducted? I don't know, was him? It must have been him, yeah. You want to be, one day, maybe. I think there's a kind of abduction that yeah. is okay. Well, maybe you already uh, was, and you don't know, we're gonna know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we talked today uh, in our breakfast about that, right, Ben? Yeah. Yeah, something's gonna come, man. Something's gonna happen. <laughs> Maybe we are aliens if we don't know. It's Who very knows? possible we're all in a spaceship yeah. now, yeah. But yeah. they say mm -hmm. the the four ray, uh, the four king. And the guy, the kid, is the he's the king. Yeah, so that's really cool, but the, the spaceship knew exactly which one to go for, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he had the vision. Yeah. And he tried to teach the the parents about his vision, but it's difficult. Sometimes they only listen with the music. So he needs to play music, and then they understand that they, they are the right. This is I right. I wonder how they felt when he was pulled up. In I want to listen to this road. music. Yeah. This is the right music. <laughs> <laughs> and here's another uh, very magical person, O Illuminado, the Illuminated. You all saw that in the galleries. It turns around. We, we don't have a photograph of it turning around, but you can see the, uh, the mural painting in the background. A lot of times these guys will do that. We'll kind of create a stage set for a work of art. This is in the Mimi Maupin show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they chose the colors in our gallery. So when you go into our gallery and see that very intense green, it, it's a green that I would never, as a curator, dare uh, suggest that we put into a gallery, but, uh, yeah. but they did. And uh, so this is a, another kind of visionary figure, like a saint or a mystic or something like that. <coughs> yeah, he's the, he's, he looks like sometimes with the lighthouse. Like the lighthouse? Like a lighthouse, Like a yeah. beacon or something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's, it's like a lighthouse. Yeah. And then this, the junkyard? Is this guy from your neighborhood? No, but we get influenced by everything that we see, we listen, we, we read sometimes. And uh, yeah, in our neighborhood in the 80s, we used to see a lot of people walking making some noise and selling stuff. I, we don't see this anymore, it's gone. But they sell milk, they, s they sell whatever, they, they buy things from your house that you don't want anymore. This used to be more popular, was popular back then. Ring the bell, hey, you have a newspaper that you don't use anymore, I wanna buy, things like that. And or sell sweets for the kids. And he's holding that green thing. What is the green thing in his hand? The green thing is like a bell that they used to do with a piece of wood and metal that you go just like that and they make a noise. So once he walk in the street, you listen to this, you know that's him. I remember to see like in the 80s, there is a car, like, like a combi. They sell a candy, the candy car. Oh God. And we was like, imagine like 20 kids. When we see they come, if they play music, say, oh, oh, the candy car, everybody get prepared. Because they stop, when they open the door, all the kids like, ah, they think they disappear. And they, but the guy know that this is going to happen for sure. Everybody going to take the candy and run. He was like 10 years old. So it was very like, like traditional thing happened. Oh, the candy car is coming. Everybody get prepared to take your own candy and run. One of the, you talked about music. And uh, you know, when I look at, at works like this with a strong pattern, it looks like an op art or Victor Vassarelli or something like that, kind of, kind of something that's made to make your eyes go a little woozy. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a musical quality to a lot of, of the patterns that you use, this idea of repetition, and there's a hypnotic kind of quality. How does music really play into what you do? Uh, we had very a lot of influence about music since the 80s, since in the beginning. Because we used to hang out at my grandfather's house, listen opera with him. He listened to opera like, like really loud, you know. <laughs> yeah, classical music. And we used to drawing, listen to that. 
And also when we go to the house of my parents, my old brother used to listen rock. He's very into the uh, rock, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. And then we get influenced about this. He was the first show us the movie The Wall when we was like seven years old in heavy metal. And then we go to the street and listen hip hop with the, our friends. So we was very like open to receive all this information. Let's try in the 80s, we say, okay, we have to, let's try rap. Imagine, it was terrible, but <laughs> we tried to make rap. We saw the photograph. Yeah. Thanks God it's a photograph. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's funny, we find a tape now. Right. Yeah, from 1987. So when will it be released? Never. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And also DJ, you know. Well, let's go to New York. Yeah. Um, this is a, a subway, sort of an imagined subway station, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, it's a, it's a New York idea. It's New York trains, right? Yes. Yeah. This is dedicated for the our friends. The clean tra uh, the clean trains. Yeah, the era, era of the clean trains. Yeah. That we know that there is a period in New York from the 70s to late 80s was very strong, and after that, some guys continue to do a lot. Uh, so we dedicate this painting for this period of people that we know, that we fall, follow, and in, in the graffiti magazines back, back, back in the 90s, they say, oh, they keep in doing that. That's really cool. That's right, you can see from there, there's a trop cat, yeah. Uh, it's is, Kat, that is Kat here today? Yeah, he's there. He came up from he's Miami. A New York graffiti legend. Yeah, our friend. That's really because yeah, yeah. I told you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's the way we find to dedicate also, you know, like a respect to all of them. Right. Yeah. Because we get inspired by all of them. I'll put in another commercial plug for Kat's um, graffiti museum that he's working on. It's not quite ready yet, but it'll be in Miami. So um, I think starting maybe in the winter or, or sometime thereabouts, uh, you'll be able to go and see Cat's Graffiti Museum. So that's uh, that idea of respect for people who have come before and kind yeah. of saving a, a, an art form, I think is really important, to <laughs> obviously to you guys and to yeah, Cat as also well. Also to preserve the history, you know? Yeah, yeah. Since in the beginning, since the 60s until now. Yeah, it's very important to have a museum. Yeah. I think it's, it's fantastic, yeah. yeah. It's very good that he, he dedicated to do that. And here's another subway scene. Who are these guys? Some b-boys. <laughs> <laughs> you, you he's a graffiti up. writer and he's a b-boy. The guy in the back, he just like a guy that saw that somebody take photo, he wanna show up, yeah. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah. But these, when you, I don't know if you, those of you who have seen the show itself will probably have thought to yourself, well, wha how do they do this? What is the process? You know, is it some, like, are there, uh, are, are, is there some collage? Are there photographic elements? And it's all done by hand, right? For yeah, this is interesting because when we saw for the first time the book Spray and Art, we, what paying a lot of attention to us was European part too, because we see like the, the characters from Motu, uh, French art, that he do very skinny lines in, in the 80s. And say why, uh, how he do that? Because when you take a can, normally it's not like really skin, but he developed his own way to to do his characters. Uh, we drawing a lot since a child. I say okay, how we pass this tile in the paper to the spray can? The same. And now we really have to find somehow to drawing with spray can like uh, we drawing with pen, same style. The they have this sutilism, you know, like very sutil, very, yeah. the way we're drawing, we want to have the same feeling in the spray can. And the same sense of control. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a remarkable shift. That's why we yeah. both have tendinite. <laughs> 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 it was heavy. But to so arrive in this style. Uh, yeah. It's a can control. You just take the can, you don't press like, <laughs> it just goes like very slow. And then the line start to, yeah. It's because of the details, you put a lot of details since he ever, so it's the best way we find to to put all, all the details in the painting and the, the different technique as well, media, like there is a collage over there. Yeah, the sequence. The yellow. Yeah, yeah. 
the, the sequence that we, we glue in the character. The other one. Yeah. This is a campaign. Cats is the best guy to explain what's there. Yeah. <laughs> Which year they come out, this campaign, Cats? Do you have one? Do you have this poster? I have one with that. That's good. When, uh, when we got out of the car the other day, and next to the Frist Art Museum's parking lot, there's a concrete wall, and on the other side of the wall is the, where the trains go by. And these guys went over to the wall and just were staring at those trains and I could picture them thinking, wouldn't it be really fun to do something with those trains? And, and uh, this is an example of a train that you've done something with. So yeah, I opened the window from my hotel and see the yard. <laughs> now, so, so where this is this train? Soon we understand about the train culture and Brazil is a very open place, like open people and happy and everything is possible. And then we say, why not we not come to the company and ask them to, to paint in the trains? And the, the, and the first ones was crazy because they say, you serious you're coming here with this idea to paint our trains? So yeah, we want to paint your trains. Legal, so yeah, legal. Can you give us the trains? We're going to make a, uh, a crew of good artists and paint the trains. In the beginning, they say no, straight away, say no, get out of here, you're crazy. But after you know, many meetings, we try to make them understand that it's good for the communities, it's good for the people that live close to the stations, that the kids are living by the stations, the, the tracks, they see the trains coming, passing by, it's colorful. So, and then we, we, we pick our friend Easy. We put together this project that called the whole train. And then we travel all Brazil, painting trains in Brazil, like in legally, like with permission, involve the community, do workshop with kids that live in close to the yard. Yeah, and right. the schools also, like take the, all the schools near to the stations and make workshop with the kids to learn how to make stencils or, or painting or get inspired by the paintings that we did on the trains. So it was very, very nice project mm -hmm. that we travel in Brazil. So doing. if there are any railroad executives out there, take note. And while you were doing that, you took a little time to go. This is a close to the yard. Yeah. yeah, there is a yard close to this small village. And after the train project, we hang out in the, the, in the village. And just ask somebody from the house, can you paint something there? I say, yeah, cool. Yeah, very w simple. We used people. to do this a lot in Brazil. Walk in Sao Paulo, walk in, in a small village, and just ask, can you paint something? And then the kids get involved, they help us to painting, like it was fun to do. More for the community. Yeah. So that's a very, uh, very uh, down to earth sort of thing. It, uh, but, but you also did some things that were not quite so down to earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a joke, <laughs> yeah. Got it. Yeah, it was a fun project to do. One of the most difficult to do because this is a real painting, it's no plotter. It's we have to really paint with spray can in the plane. It uh, was very um, ambitious, 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 say? Yeah. So we have a friend, Ronaldo, everybody knows, the football player. <laughs> he, w in a, we have a dinner with him. He say he asked us, "You have you guys paint a plane?" He say no, never do that because you guys paint everything. You never paint a plane. He say no. He say yeah, let's paint a plane. Let's paint to paint a plane. Why wouldn't you? You paint the trains. Why not? No, he's paint a plane. Uh, he, then he knows the guys from the company. He say why you don't invite the guys to paint one of the, your airplanes? 
And the I guy loved the idea. I said, yeah, if it's possible, because we don't know if the material is going to dam damage the, the way they fly, the heavy stuff, you know, they have to really be careful. Yeah, take a look at those pilots and then imagine them <laughs> actually doing that. <laughs> yeah. The funny thing, uh, go back of the, the other photo. When we're painting the body of the plane, the guys of the company say, you should not paint in the winds and do not paint in the turbine. How do you say the turbine. turbine? Yeah, don't do it. All right. And then we start to hang out with the people from the uh, hangar, the workers, and try to understand why you could not paint in this and why, uh, where we can paint and where we cannot paint. It. We really understand with the engineers where is the problem to do it and where was not the problem. And then we see that we could paint it. <laughs> we decide that, oh, okay, it's nothing going to happen, I think, I guess. Yes. It's not going cr to yes. crash. <laughs> and then we waiting the, 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 the guy that commissioned this to leave, say, we're going to do one. And then we did it one. And then he coming back the next day, wow, you guys painting this. Say, yeah, yeah, but we didn't painting on this, on this, on this, on this, on this, on this. Say, you sure? Yeah, not. Come on, I'll show you. And then we show everything. Ah, okay. Seems to be okay. And then we paint in the other one. And then he loved it. And for the last, we paint in the, the, the wheels of the plane. This plane fly for two years. They work like the whole Sao Paulo. Uh, I don't think so they do Miami, but they do the whole Brazil. The whole Bra they travel like all over Brazil for two years. Yeah. And here's another project. Yeah. And this gives you some sense of the, the, the way the way. Uh, more and more, we try to bring back our childhood, our vivencia with hip hop. And we are one of our best friends is those this guy. This guy is the same guy in 1981, I think this photo. No, 83 maybe when the film is Wild Style. So this guy with the white shirt here is those green the other guy is can sweep the blue ones can sweep the other ones those we i remember to see this photo in 1985 in brazil in an article about hip hop and we saved this photo because we think it's very very special photo and then after we, we, we become like close and very very good friend of those that guy his father he's a genius he's like we get a lot of inspired by him and we become best friends, like Barry, like all those guys, you know. We come to Brazil in the 90s and become good friends. And then we, when we did this last show in Limi Malpin, we dedicated one room only with our influence of the hip hop. To painting, like all the paintings is connected with breakdancing, b-boy, graffiti writers, everything. So we painted this photo. And now we invite him, say, those, let's paint together. No, we do, let's do a painting together. And he did the, the background over there with the three guys. He did that. You know? And then we did it. And the photo yeah. is from Martha Cooper, yeah. great photographer. She's taking the photo in 82 or 83. Yeah, she's yeah. a very she's incredible photographer. Yeah. She's yeah. incredible. Yeah, she's very important. Documenting yeah. the graffiti the scenes, Harry, street, Harry, street Henry, painting. Henry, yeah. Henry Schaufler, Henry too. Yeah. He just yeah. opened a show in New, uh, New York now. In the Bronx Museum. In the Bronx Museum, an incredible show. Well, we're, we're running a little low on time, so what I'm going to do is very quickly uh, just go through a number of slides so you can see the kind of the breadth of the work, okay. the extent of the work, yeah. uh, maybe pause on <coughs> occasion, but um, this is an, an, another installation at Lehman yeah. Maupin Gallery. They call the Kiss Room. The Kiss Room. And also yeah. they play a music. It's like a music box. This is another installation in north of Brazil. Uh, it's it's also a music big box too. They play a song, yeah. music box, yeah, yeah. 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 Mu mu music box. This is another installation we did it for a music festival. Mm -hmm. They call Back to Black, it's and they're just balloons, right? Yeah, just yeah. balloons, yeah. Yeah. and was in an old train station for three days. Uh, this is the. Midnight moment. Uh, yeah, a project we did in New York for the Times Square. Yeah, really an incredible. They an run incredible for project. For forty days, just no. Right there. 
More than one month, right? Yeah. And then there are the giants. And then there are the giants. This is a, a project we, we start in 2001, I guess, in Greece. This is in Volos, in Greece. We was invited mm. to, to do a, just go back a little okay. bit. We was invited to do a wall, and we just thinking that was the, 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 was the best idea just to leave the background clean and just put the guy there. And this one start the project, the giant project. So, so this is sort of inspired by a Greek, a story in Greek. No, really, we just, it was funny because we did this in, the, in Volos, mm -hmm. this giant. Yeah. And after we finished, we didn't know, someone come to us and say, you guys painting the giant of Volos. Say, but who's the giant of Volos? <laughs> and there is a mythology mm -hmm. here that yeah. uh, in, in this yeah, part yeah. of Greece was a giant. I said, whoa, this is to do these kind of characters and leave the background in the street like you would inside. But then when we saw this wall, we said, no, we should do big scale. It was the first time we did a big character. Let's look at this one from Minsk. Uh, this is in Minsk in Belarus, yeah? And this is pretty, I mean, I, I'm so um, astonished by the way that you guys work with these giants. And then you'll go to, uh, go to uh, do a project like this, and it's not that somebody's paying you a lot of money. No. You do it because, for other reasons. It's funny, because people see these big murals, they're thinking that we make money with this. And it's not, it's not like that. It's, it's very hard, actually, yeah. because... Um, they pay you the flight, the accommodations, the materials, but not fees. Not all the projects that we get fee for for doing murals like this. We do because we really wanted to to have our work on the streets and to be able for everybody to see. Not people that just come to museum or institutions, but there it's a uh, it's outside for everyone. So it's more about this to share with everybody that passing by, everybody that lives around. The, the wall or is, is I think is a good 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 place to occupy it. So yeah, it's a very generous way of thinking about an, uh, uh, creating an audience for art that might not have much access to art. Yeah, yeah, it's that's really right. Really yeah, this is the main reason. Especially yes. in Minsk, you did a lot of. It was the fourth time we come to Minsk. Yeah, yeah, it was very very interesting place because yeah. there is no even tagging nothing in the street, nothing. They, very clean, the city. And they make this project, they call Ulitza Brazil. They invite Brazilian people to come there to make murals, together with artists from Minsk. It was very, very interesting, yeah. yeah. I love the community aspect of this. And this one is in Vancouver. 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 Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the most big work we have done, like, because it's like 360 and huge. Yeah. And we're painting yeah, everywhere. This it was, was very difficult to do that because this factory never stopped to work. Yeah. It's like cement factory yeah. Yeah. was very, very hard to do. Especially the other side, because they have these things in the back. And they always fall things on the head. It was <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. This is New York. Yeah. This is dedicated to first freeze. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so not only him, but other b-boys that pass away. And first freeze was from Rocksteady Crew. And it's funny, we find this wall in New York, two facades, one in front of the other, like this. So these are the two that you were standing yeah. in between in, in the yes. first picture. And they say, yeah. why should you don't do like a two, two breakdown screws ready to battle? Because yeah. they're in front of each other. Yeah. And track two is Pass Away. Glide yeah. Master from New York Glide City Master. Breakers. Yeah. We dedicate for all these people that are very important Pass Away. And also, we invite Todd James to do the graffiti jacket of the lady over there. And we have Dondi over there in the T-shirt of the guy. The famous photos from Martha Cooper. Martha yeah. Cooper. Yeah, it's more dedicated for this because in our days, you know, this it's it's gone. The, the yeah. style of clothing, <coughs> the boom boxes now everything's iPhone or telephone. Yeah. So it's good to bring it back. This yeah. how was back then? How difficult was back then? And how? Precious was. And yeah. also a way we find to thank you, them. What we get from them in the 80s, give it back. Uh, all these years, we learn and learn and learn to have our own style. And we have this opportunity to go to New York now and give back to them. A way to say thank you, guys. Yeah. 
It's really heartwarming. I love it. This is Milano. Angarbicoca in Milano. I'd like to use this shade like of the building and transform. Yeah, I like the way that you sort of yeah. respond to the environment. First, first the time we saw this building, I said, this is a subway car. Yeah. <laughs> it's like straight away. <laughs> Not because we like trains. I think you do, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is a wonderful one. Yeah, this, this is, is in a Scotland, yeah. the Kelb Kelburn Castle. This, is a, this was crazy because the family there, that is one, uh, it's the only place that the family, they, they, it was two brothers, no, one, one brother, one sister, they convinced his father to do this. And the father said, yeah, okay, it's no problem. <laughs> but they have no idea, you know, yeah. how. <laughs> and they live inside of the castle. It's yeah. Of the oh. few castles in Scotland, they, the family still live inside. Yeah. They arrange sometimes for weddings, and, weddings and parties, but they live inside. And okay. we live inside for like mo more than one month in painting. Yeah. So there is ghosts there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dusseldorf. Wall we did last Dusseldorf, year. Dusseldorf, Dusseldorf, yeah. yeah. Never also, it's, 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 sorry. it's the idea also to, to have something in for people from the trains to see, people mm -hmm. the community to see. And here's a Tate. It's Tate, Tate Modern. Modern. Yeah. yeah. The first nude, right? The first nude giant? Yeah. The yeah. first yeah. one. Yeah. The, the naked and the giant. only one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a graffiti writer. That's crazy. Yeah. So he and goes out. And he don't like the cameras all over London. He collects the cameras. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> He's a graffiti writer who goes out at night with no clothes on. Right? Yes. Yeah. Naked okay. graffiti writer. Just the hood to protect yeah. his. his, his. Okay. Uh, I'm going to skip. This good. I'm going to skip that one just because we really are just about yeah. out of time. This is very. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, the um, video no. Yeah. Uh, and I'd like to uh, just wrap up with this. With this. Okay. Yeah, follow this yeah. before I finish. All right, this is like a, a short movie. Yeah, thank you. That um, our friend Ben Moore, that's sitting over there. Yeah, Ben. He he. Uh, we are good friend, best friends. Like he have this idea to put together our life in in a way that people can understand more and share more what we believe. And I think he really understand who we are so far, and going to understand more and more, right, Ben? Because this is just a little bit of uh, a big project that we're going to work together. Yeah, we have idea to make a, a, a big movie. So it starts with the idea of documentary, but we see now that's much far away. It's only a documentary. It's going to be a real movie. So he did this clip. You can call clip, right? Video. Yeah, short film. Yeah, the idea started a few years ago with uh, Ben, Josh, Jordan, and our friends. You know, like that we just yeah. okay. We have to do something that can show more. Jordan is here too. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, it just reinforces what you said right at the beginning that anything is possible. And I think that it's just so wonderful to imagine not just what you've done, Ben, with the animation, but what might be possible. You know, in uh, you know virtual reality and 3D projection and you know all the all the uh, new technology visualizing visualization technology so let's take a look how at this how how old is this then uh, 2016 but the, the footage in there is uh, over a 4 year period i basically um, when i can turn it down and have the nerve or the permission to put on like a shot of the like 5D camera and bring it and render but most of the stuff came from So creativity generates creativity. I love it. Let's look. It's 
small town. Any questions? Oh, over here. Thank you. I uh, wanted to thank you so much for bringing them to Nashville. I'm a huge fan. I'm from their hometown, Sao Paulo, as well. Have done a lot of academic work. I'm a professor at Vanderbilt. Have done a lot of academic work based on your, on the inspiration of your work. So I'm. Um, really moved that you're here. Um, and uh, I have a question about uh, graffiti artists, art in general, as being a very democratic way of bringing art to different spaces. And how do you feel about your art being in the streets as well as in the, within the walls of a museum? Because it's very uh, it's a different world, we really divide very. Because it's very clean, what is graffiti and street art, and what is this like uh, an exhibition in a museum or institution or in a gallery? It's totally different for us. We never call this is a street art exhibition or a graffiti exhibition. Um, because graffiti falls is very unique outside um, of the of the museum, um, especially a museum like this contemporary art museum um, is different than if you have a, like a like a graffiti museum 
that we talk in here. But for us, graffiti is something else that we find outside and on the streets to communicate with people in different ways. So we don't, that is not a bridge for us that, okay, the guys leave the streets and goes to the museum. Because we are very open. If you, we want to go out and painting today, we go and painting. Or if you want to sit in the studio and do animation, we do. If you want to come to the museum and do a sculpture to put it here, we do. It's like very open for us. But we divide for us. Graffiti world is one world. And this is different world. This here we find the way to really create our own world and share with people uh, everything, like sculptures, installations, paintings. It's the way we find to put you inside of this magical world. Because sometimes in the streets, you, this is, is, is lost, you know. It's too much is going on. We don't see, oh, we put a character there, and the guy that lives there make a fire to cook his food and burn, or the gov government, they clean, so you never know. Welcome. Another, oh. Uh, by the way, just love your stuff. Thank you. Um, really appreciate it, moved by it all, my wife and I. Um, I love the collaborations. I've seen a lot of collaborations, saw a few here. I was wondering, do you have anything currently that you might be working on uh, with other artists? Collaboration? Yeah. No. Okay. No, in the moment. I think the last one was with uh, Aris. Aris, uh, this artist from Spain. I think it was the last one. We did a few collaborations. But not many, like Banksy or Addis and Doze, Barry, like few. Yeah, yeah, we did a, like a, a, a nice project in Hamburg Bahnhof in Berlin just a few months ago. Like a spectacle, music and dance together with class, classical music. In collaboration with, with the, Plin the Plin Steps is a uh, dancers from Germany. They have a big academy of dance, but we yeah, choose a lot of dancers. Yeah, b-boys, break dance, b-boys yeah. and b-girls. Yeah. We choose a lot of dancers all over the world and make a really nice crew with uh, b-boy, b-girl, contemporary art dancers, ballet, classical ballet, and then made it make this spectacle. So I think this was the last collaboration, actually. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. The, they call the flying pictures. It's, it's finished already. But in internet, you can you can see. So we created big inflatables, big balloons, uh, characters, and all the the vest of the the dancers, characters that interact with people. It's, it's fun. Yeah. The idea now is to bring this to Brazil, and after Brazil, maybe New York or travel with this. We hope so. New York, we here. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Travel. Hi. Hi. Hello. Um, you mentioned earlier when you were younger you would draw the same thing whether you were together doing it on the same page or separate, you'd draw the same thing. If you were to start a new work today, how does that ideation into actual execution work out between the two of you? We, it's funny, we never know how to explain that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe our mother can, could explain and our father, but it's difficult for us. We are too too deep inside of this, and and we don't want to understand. I think one life is too short to understand that. We, just we try to understand. Do, yeah. Sometimes we try to understand before we born how was that, and we could, and maybe when we pass away, maybe we understand what happened in this life here. Maybe we understand that we get the answer of this, because we need to go out of ourselves to see this, because impossible to know, to connect. Yeah. <laughs> I know everything he's going to do. He knows everything I'm going to do. He's my best critical. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here. Thank really you. Wonderful to hear you talk. Um, we saw your work in Pittsburgh at the Mattress Factory in the, over the winter, and um, oh, my nice. partner's 
parents actually saw your work up in Vancouver, like two very different things happening, which I think is fascinating. Um, we brought some of our advanced drawing students from Murray State University, and you guys mentioned during your talk that you had a point trying to figure out, like we have to figure out what our style is, right? We have to figure out what our voice is. And at what point did you feel comfortable saying this is who we are as artists? Um, I think it's very natural for us because once you find your own style, we don't need nothing else. I remember when we get deep inside of our room, these four years, we even come down to see our parents sometimes. Oh, there is visit, someone's coming, your aunt's coming. We just want to stay in the room and drawing. And my mother and our father, he understand that. And they know that we need that time, we need to stay there together. But they don't know what we are doing, you know, like, but take some time for them to understand what we are doing back then. I think back in that time, only we understand each other, what we are doing. Nobody else understand why you dedicate so much on this, for what reason, you know? And, but this was the only one, the only thing that we want in life was the style, to find the style, but we don't know what to do with this. We're even thinking, okay, after that, you find your own style, so what, so what, what are you doing? We don't have this question, because we just want to find. And when we find, we say, wow, we are in the right way, so let's keep going. It was like a, a, a dream that you don't want to wake up. And then you see something more exciting, and more exciting, and more exciting, and more exciting, and then you say, wow, we still have to connect with this world outside? Yeah, we do, so okay, let's go there, and we connect, but we, we let's go back there, you know? And more we see, more we, need to, we want to share, because it's so exciting, so magical, that we cannot keep for us, you know? We have to find a way to, to share, and we find all these different ways to share. Even if people don't understand sometimes, they take wrong, but you never know, you know, like, even our par parents back then, they, they don't understand. They know that we are in the right, right way, but they don't know what is this character, what they talk, what they, why you drawing the guy in the boat and this river, and why your moon is like this and it's not like that, you know? Why you see the trees like this and not like this? Why they wanna draw things that's not real, you know, in our life? You are not happy with the real thing? You know, like it was very funny to see all these questions and, but we feel comfortable, you know. Unfortunately, sometimes when you start to get it recogni recognizing, like the pe people pay for your work or they invite you to do this, invite you to do that, ah, now they are important. But it's funny because all this year we find some way to bring everybody inside of our world. When we do shows, exhibitions, installations, like you say, matter of fact, when you go inside, you're already inside of our world. You know? And sometimes you relate the way to this. It's the way we bring back, for example, our family. When my mother or my father come to the show, our show, they say, wow, okay, I understand now. You know? Why they spend like time and time drawing, drawing, drawing. Very simple, it's like a music. Play a music or write a book. But the idea is not to change anybody, it's not to change people's mind or, it's just to show that we, two guys that believe in this, find a way to share this with everybody. And the, if this can help you to believe in your own thing and develop your own thing and, and go, go for it. Just go for it because you are not alone, you know? Thank you, thank yeah, you all for coming. Everything you do in the life, you're gonna change somebody somehow, you know? Like, thank, thanks. Thank you. All the, the everybody that's here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.